I would probably have to say, you know, the, the people who make and sell the insulin have a lot of power. Um, oftentimes companies want to blame the middlemen, the insurance companies, and they do have a part to play in this. But when, when these companies are making billions and billions of dollars in profit, you know, they have the power and control to actually make real change, make things affordable. Um, I know they're, they're in it for a business, so we always have to consider that and remember that. But at the same time, um, I do think that is probably the number one thing that could change um, and make things better for people is if, if prices were made more affordable and if, and if these companies truly cared about humans and, you know, prioritized people over profit. So that's a big one. Um, the number two yeah. biggest is tough. Um, I, I'm not really sure because, as I said, there it really depends on where you are and what your local situation is. But I do think um, having an understanding of the severity and the, act the dire deathly consequences of not having your insulin in supplies is, is huge. And, and also looking at how much these uh, complications or hospital admissions actually cost to a government, um, you know, treating it regularly and healthily along the way is really going to save money in the long run. So it's, it's about that whole sort of package of awareness and understanding and economic cost and cost savings, cost benefit to treating people, even though it seems expensive up front, it's going to save costs down the line. So I, I would say, you know, something along the lines of the awareness and sort of government support of access to medicines. And that doesn't just mean diabetes as well. You know, there's other chronic conditions, non-preventable conditions that this should be made a priority for as well. Really interesting thoughts there. And it was funny that you used the word economics because for me in the United States, um, you know, which has or should have plenty of resources for diabetes and for healthcare, uh, economics doesn't really apply it to healthcare and the system that we have set up, at least today. And it, it's always changing, which is probably another difficulty. But, you know, it's not as simple as a supply and demand because it's clearly there's demand. People need it. People are looking for both insulin and other medications for diabetes, in all medications, really, if you look into some of the pharmaceutical challenges that have been in the news lately. But it is it is interesting because it's also a supply chain for us here in the United States, as I'm sure with everywhere else around the world, because it's not like I can just you know go and pick this up at the local store. I have to either get a prescription from my doctor, and that doctor I might not be able to get into their office for six months. Me specifically, I couldn't make another endo appointment for 12 months, which is scary. And so with that, there's certain barriers that are put in place, um, you know, as I say, right in the middle or through that supply chain. Uh, and I'm curious, Payan or Ashley, um, I'd love to hear if you have any specific thoughts as it relates to this global down to regional and local level. And we'll start with Payan. For me, coming from a patient in from Singapore, I feel kind of privileged that I get easy access to insulin. So um, basically, it's just a simple three-month prescription from your doctor every time you go for an appointment, which is about three to four, every three to four months um, session. Um, and then um, you can easily get, pres um, your, get your insulin from the pharmacy at a hospital, right? And then on the other hand... Um, why do I feel privileged is that because I hear lots of stories. My friends from the other um, less developed countries, they have issues accessing, um, getting insulin supplies. And it kind of worries me, you know, um, as a person with diabetes, how can they be, how do we survive without insulin? Yeah. How about you, Ashley? What you said, Payan, has mirrored a lot of what has been shared with Beta Change over the last few weeks. You know, we've had people talking about what insulin and what access to diabetes, uh, excellent to diabetes care means to them. And for some of them, like for Emily from New Zealand, to her, it means freedom, freedom to do what she wants, freedom to live a, a healthy and normal life. And for people like Nathan from Bolivia, he talks about, um, you know, friends and family having to actually sacrifice a lot of things to actually just live uh, healthy with diabetes because 
access to insulin is so difficult and so expensive that they can't possibly um, have that luxury there. Patrick from America says something similar, you know, that the key is the wallet and phone and a pat down before you leave the house is also accompanied with patting down to make sure you have your insulin. It's an everyday essential. So to hear stories that people are not getting those, um, you know, getting things that they need to to live their full life, it's it's really sad. And in Australia, we're lucky that we actually have the NDSS, which is the National Diabetes um, Service Scheme that subsidizes a lot of our insulin, our medication supplies, equipment and things like that. And yes, it's a huge privilege, but at the same time, we need to look outside beyond our bubble and help those who can't afford insulin and, you know, supplies and things like that. So I think that that for me is is big. And this is why we're having this discussion here today. So um yeah, so that, that's my thought. I think I'll pass it back to Rob. Thanks, Ashley. And again, thank you for all of our, uh, uh, everybody that's been talking with us and everybody that's been um, really so supportive in what we're doing here at Beta Change because we want to also support you and, and really get the messages out. Um, so individuals like Nathan and Patrick, and I can speak firsthand. I, I might not be located in Bolivia or uh, in other places around the world, but I am located in the United States and we are still facing some incredible challenges. One, especially being the cost of medication and the cost of overall healthcare, uh, inversely related to the, the ultimate, you know, goal. And that's, uh, good outcomes and, and positive clinical results. So, um, I know we have some questions coming in now from, um, our Facebook live page, which we will get to. Uh, actually, a few of them are going to be on our uh, next questions here. But please, just a reminder, feel free to jump in, ask us questions now and, and, and down the road too. 